Hi, my name is Lila and I'm the Mini Witch. Welcome to my YouTube channel. NMM or non-metallic metals can be a bit intimidating. It doesn't have to be that difficult. And I'm going to show you the two tricks that are going to help make NMM easy. So my first trick for NMM is finding a reference photo. And there are two types of reference photos that you can utilize. Either a photograph of the miniature that you're painting or an actual armor photograph. Before we get too far into this video, I wanted to let you guys know that I'm doing a giveaway. How cool is that? Um, so I am partnering up with a company called Game Envy and they are going to be giving away one of my subscribers several of their products. They're going to be giving away a hobby holder, a hobby holder grip, and a brush stand. And I am extremely excited. Game Envy is a small but very cool company. I actually met them in person at Adepticon last year and they were extremely awesome and I really do love their products. So I am so excited that not only is this my first giveaway, but this is also a company and a product that I absolutely swear by. So we're going to talk about that more at the end of the video. So one of the first things that I do is I look at the mini that I'm going to be painting online and see if I can find any reference photos that I like. Now, normally I'm against stealing directly from someone, but copying is a really great way to learn a new skill, especially if it's something as intimidating as NMM. Did you know that copying is how Renaissance painters learn to paint? We found a direct copy of the Mona Lisa, but it's not just a copy. It was actually a direct copy of Leonardo's but it's not just any copy, it's directly from Leonardo da Vinci. It is actually one of his students who was learning to paint right alongside Leonardo as he was painting the Mona Lisa. And we can tell this because the under sketches underneath the layers of paint on both the Mona Lisa and the copy are the exact same. So the only way that would be possible is if Leonardo's student was copying directly off of the same canvas that Leonardo was painting on. If you can't find an NMM version that you like, see if you can find any photographs of the miniature painted with metallic paint. Metallic paint is a really great way to see where the highlights are going to land on a miniature. Now, metallic paint isn't as good as showing the shadows, but we're going to talk about that later. Just make sure that whether you're copying NMM directly or copying the metallics from a already painted miniature that you give a shout out or list the credits to or whatever, somehow link back to the artist that you're copying. That is the only way that copying is okay. So link to their Instagram, their YouTube, comment on their Facebook, send them your artwork. Just make sure that somehow people who look at your miniature can trace back to the person that you've copied. For this miniature, I found this version of Tarina Follow Heart painted by Kevin Watt using green metallic paint. Um, he actually has a YouTube channel, which I will link below. And thank you for taking the time to paint this and post it for me because it was a huge help. Whether you can find a NMM or metallic version of your miniature, I also recommend looking at real armor as a reference. One of my favorite places to get armor reference photos is from the metmuseum.com. And I love them because they have high quality photos, high quality files. Most of them are public domain and they have photographs of armor at several different angles. So it's going to be even easier to know how to paint both the front side and back of your miniature. Once you can look at these reference photos. For this miniature, I'm using the set of plate mail created by Antonio Misaglia from 1450. The main thing you want to look for in a reference photo is armor that matches your miniature. It doesn't matter how great of a reference photo you can find, how high quality, how many angles, how cool it looks, if it doesn't actually match your model and you can't work from it. 
So try to find a set of armor that looks as closely to your miniature as possible. Second, consider things like color and reflectiveness. Now, this isn't required, but it can definitely be helpful. For example, gold armor isn't just gold. It's shades of brown or red, yellow, and having an actual gold reference photo will be able to help show you how those colors interact with different degrees of reflectiveness. Silver, on the other hand, could be blue, green, or purple. So take some time and look at other reference photos in the color that you're planning on painting your armor. Another thing to consider is the reflectiveness of your armor. For example, armor that's gone through battle, that is covered in blood and dirt and grime and dinged and dented and scratched is not going to look the same as armor that you would wear in a parade or for some sort of regalia event. So keep that in mind when you're looking for reference photos because you want your reference photo to match what you want to achieve. A few other things to consider when looking at your reference photo. First, highlights will follow the shape of the object. When we look at these two helmets, we can tell how the light is following the general shape. For example, on this helmet, the reflection is long and thin, whereas on the second one, you can see how it wraps around the different shapes and circumferences of this helmet. Consider the proximity of your highlights and shadows. For example, a greave is going to have the highlights and shadows be a lot closer together versus the highlights and shadows on a breastplate. And that has to do with the amount of curve that is in each of these items. Greaves are very round. They're almost perfect cylinders, whereas a breastplate has a lot more of a gradual curve. And so that gradation between colors is going to be equally as gradual. Areas that come to a sharp point are probably going to have a highlight on one side and a shadow on the other. And also don't forget to add edge light highlighting in between. Lastly, consider this photo as a guide and feel free to intensify those highlights and shadows as you see fit. Now that I have these two reference photos, let's go ahead and look at how I use them in painting this miniature. Starting with this photograph of armor, we can see how the light wraps around this breastplate. I have gone ahead and highlighted the areas that I will be referencing in red and those arrows symbolize the dark to light transition. It is darker under the arms and under the helmet, and it all converges in the middle to a pretty white highlight. I prefer to use wet blending, but you can use whatever technique you want. I usually do my wet blending with several coats of thinner paint so that I can get that smooth transition that I'm after. Any areas that are still a bit rough, I go ahead and glaze back in later. Also, while I'm here, I'm going to be doing a quick basic shade of the shield, light on top, dark on the bottom. Next, I'm working on the legs, and here I'm going to be utilizing the highlights that I have found in Kevin Watts' photo. Now I'm on to the shield. And here we have a bit of a problem because Kevin Watts' photo does not utilize metallic paint on the shield. So I'm going to be back to using a reference photo. However, even the reference photo doesn't really mimic the shield. So this brings us on to the second tip, and that is understanding the non-metallic metal gradient. 
Contrast is one of the most important elements of non-metallic metals, to the point that without it, you can't really paint non-metallic metals. The illusion of reflectiveness is created by the alternating gradient between light and dark. Generally, white, your midtone of whatever color armor you're painting, down to black and back again. This understanding can be utilized to fill in the gaps that you're not sure about. Like I said previously, metallic paint has a tendency to not have the shadows be as intense or have the same placement as real metal would. So in those areas that look too blank or for some reason don't look right, ask yourself if that's because you need to do a transition from light to dark in order to make it look more realistic. I was able to base a lot of this shield based on this photograph by Wakasa Wakan. However, I obviously couldn't base all of it off the shield, specifically these sections. So what I ended up doing was knowing that this gradation is one of the really important elements that make items look reflective, I decided to just add it in. And I could make an argument as to why this reflection would be there, but the real answer is, is I'm not sure if it's realistic or not. But since we are basically trained to see that gradation and mentally label it as a reflection, it doesn't really matter how realistic it is. So what I did is in those middle sections, I started a dark gradation and then went down to a lighter color. And then in that bottom section, I had black on the outside edges and a white lighter highlight in the center. Lastly is the final details being lining and edge highlighting. So take a dark color and line all of those individual sections. A, it's going to give you more contrast and B, it's also going to help you give more separation between those sections. Then go in with a vibrant white and do some edge highlighting on anywhere that comes to a sharp point. The last detail is to take another look at your reference photos. Is there anywhere that is an extremely white, vibrant highlight that you've missed? Maybe there is a bright white highlight on the buckle of their boots that you missed, or maybe their armor has rivets that you could highlight. Remember that white is the pinnacle highlight and you want to use it sparingly only on the very utmost, most reflective part of your miniature. These final details are really what's going to help sell your model. So take some time, look at your reference photos one last time, compare them to your miniature and see if there's anything that you missed. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Now we're going to take some time and talk about this giveaway. All you need to do to be entered into this giveaway is comment down below and be subscribed to my channel. I will be picking a winner at random on March 5th, and that is a Thursday. So be sure that you will be watching your YouTube messages so that you can see when I contact you to let you know that you are the winner. I'm also really excited to say that I have a discount code with Game Envy. So even if you don't win or if you want to support this really cool, unique, small business anyway, go ahead and utilize that coupon code. It's not an affiliate code. I don't make anything. I am just supporting this company that I really enjoy. And I think that you're going to like a lot too. Thank you so much for watching my video and supporting me. I would love it if you would follow me on Instagram so that you can stay up to date. If you are interested in behind the scenes content, as well as joining my growing community, you can support me on Patreon. If nothing else, feel free to share this video on Facebook or Reddit or with anyone that you think would benefit from this and let me know what you think. Was this video helpful to you? And if it wasn't, what do you need to better understand and feel more confident tackling NMM? Thank you so much and have a wonderful day.